Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and this is Brewing with Underwhelming Commanders, episode 20, my last Underwhelming Commanders video of the year. And we are starting out this week with Kazul Tyrant of the Cliffs, coming in at third place. Three red, red Ogre Warrior, five, four. Whenever a creature an opponent controls attacks, if you're the defending player, create a three, three red Ogre Creature token unless that creature's controller pays three. This is really a great card that could go in the 99 of a lot of decks. It's sort of a Pillow Fort card in red, which is really, really interesting. I think it's a great card. I think it's a great commander. It is a little underwhelming, obviously, because you sort of want your opponents to attack you, which isn't always the best strategy in a deck. You know, I'm going to be a little lazy here. I'll be honest. It is the holidays, so I'm going to take a bit of a shortcut here. I think this is a perfect commander for all of those crazy red enchantments that deal with combat. I already made this video. You can go check it out if you want. Just wacky red enchantments that the majority of them fit into a combat style. Grand Melee, obviously, is just an absolute perfect fit in this deck because you want to encourage attacking. Probably want to also encourage blocking as well. Heat Stroke also works here, right? If you block with your Ogre tokens and they die, you don't really care because you're going to be getting more anyway. Your opponent's creature is also going to die, right? Your opponent attacks with their big creature. They got to pay the three because if they don't, you're going to create the Ogre token that's then going to block their creature and then both are going to die. Just a great fitness deck. Go watch that video. Like I said, I'm taking a bit of a shortcut here. Look at all of the enchantments and that video, the combat-related ones, and you really could stuff all of them in this deck. We obviously want to be encouraged to attacking. You know, our opponents can attack us, yes, because we get that ogre token. Also, though, we can goad. Obviously, goading will work as well here. I think a lot of the strategy of winning this game is... We just want to encourage our opponents to attack each other. They can attack us if they want. It's just going to give us an ogre, likely. But attacking each other is also going to be great. Grenzo and Disrupt the Quorum are just perfect fits in this deck. Agitator Ant is great. Loring the Diversion, a new card from Innistrad Crimson Vow, which obviously we're not going to have the partner with part in here. But I think Loreen is actually a great fit. Two and a red human rogue, 3-3. Three, three. With First Strike, pay two, sacrifice an artifact or creature, goad target creature. And we will have, you know, those ogre tokens that we are making we can then sacrifice to go at our opponent's creatures if need be goblin spy master is a fantastic fit in this deck two and a red goblin rogue two one with first strike at the beginning of each opponent's end step that player creates a one one red goblin creature token with creatures you control attack each combat in a fable so again we want to be doing that also want to be giving our opponents those creatures right if they attack us with the one one goblin that we gave them they're not going to pay the three likely we'll make our three three token and then probably just take the one right we will take the one damage because we don't want to block it because we want them to keep that token so that they have to keep attacking every turn i also like relic robber in here don't forget if you're goading your opponent's creatures or forcing them to attack every turn it leaves them open right so you can get in for damage really really easily relic robber is a great fit here two in a red goblin rogue two two with haste when it deals combat damage to a player, that player creates an 0-1 colorless goblin construct artifact creature token with. This creature can't block, and at the beginning of your upkeep, this creature deals 1 damage to you. So we can be getting in on this. It's just extra little chip damage that we can have every turn. Also gives our opponent a, that 0-1 creature that they then have to attack with, with all of our goading type effects, or grand melee, or whatever. And again, if they attack us with it, that's okay. We'll make an ogre token and just not block the 0-1, because it's not going to do any damage anyway. I think the Akron War is a great fit here three and a red saga gain control of target creature for as long as the akron war remains on the battlefield that's always a good thing until your next turn creatures your opponents control attack each combat if able of course that's what we're doing already and then i really like the last one each tapped creature deals damage to itself equal to its power so now you know we, we can prepare for this we see it coming we get to the two we cast a disrupt decorum so that when we get to the three now all of those creatures that are likely tapped are gonna basically kill themselves right and then Avatar of Slaughter is a great finisher here, I think. Six, red, red. So an eight mana Avatar, eight, eight. But it is a finisher. All creatures have double strike and attack each combat of Fable. So again, this is probably what you're mostly going to be doing in the deck. Is just, it's chaos. Everyone is attacking everyone else. Sometimes people are attacking you. That's okay. We can make those ogre tokens. Sometimes they're attacking each other, which is even better probably. So Avatar of Slaughter is going to be a way that we can really help to close out the game with this deck, I think. Like I said, Kazul I think is a, yes, definitely an underwhelming commander, but also I think an underrated commander. I think it's a really fun, interesting builder 
the round. That also goes in the 99 of a lot of decks as well. But coming in at number two this week is Rain Academy Chancellor. Two and a blue. Human Wizard, 1-1. One, one. Whenever you or a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or an ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. You may draw an additional card if Rain Academy Chancellor is enchanted. That's really a great ability. And, you know, like I was talking about with putting commanders in the 99, I had it rain in my commanders that I think work really good in the 99 of a lot of decks. You could throw rain in any deck any deck doesn't even have to be enchanted and every time you or a permanent you control becomes a target of a spell or an ability an opponent controls you get to draw a card that's fantastic even if your opponent uses a wasteland on one of your lands that's a permanent you control becoming a target of a spell or ability you get to draw off of that you'd be surprised throw this in your deck don't even worry about the auras i mean if you're doing auras obviously it's going to be an extra good fit but just i throw this down and every single time me or a permanent i control becomes targeted i get to draw it you really get a ton of value off of this i think it's a really interesting commander i absolutely love the art i'll just say that matthew wilson is one of my favorite artists he did a lot of art from urza saga block love the art always love the commander this is one that again i cracked open packs back in the day wasn't really sure what to do with it but now we have this fantastic format called commander where we can build around this card and try to make a deck out of it but again, it's, it's it's a difficult one, right? We want essentially our opponents to target our permanents, which there really isn't a way to build your deck around that. Like you, every time you have a commander where you're relying on your opponents to do stuff, it can be tough. Fortunately for us, you know, our opponents targeting our permanents is going to be sort of a foregone conclusion. It's it's a highly unlikely that we can go a whole game without our opponents doing that. Obviously, though, if we're going to actually build around a theme here, it has to be the aura theme to begin with, right? We got to throw some auras in this deck. You can throw whatever your favorites are in here. Protection auras are going to be good. Like Curator's Ward, I think, is a great fit here. We could throw it on our commander because our commander is probably the only permanent that we don't want targeted, right? We don't want to go too heavy on the hexproof theme or shroud or whatever because we actually want our permanents to be targeted so we don't want to prevent our opponents from targeting our permanents our commander is the one permanent that we actually do want to prevent it from getting removed obviously so curator's ward works here also if our commander happens to leave the battlefield we'll get to draw two more cards so if our opponent just board wipes that's not targeting we still get to draw the two cards so that's good vanishing is probably the best one here for your commander because we can pay one stick it on our commander and then we can pay blue blue and the enchanted creature phases out, which is extra good because now our opponents can target it, right? So our opponents can target our rain to try to get it off the table. We get the trigger. The draw trigger goes on the stack and then we can respond and phase out our commander. It's now phased out, so it's not going to get removed, but we still get to draw the two cards. So that's probably the best fit here. You can just throw in whatever your favorite auras are. Either way, though, we're in an aura theme. So the typical, you know, not that there's a ton of them, but mono blue aura cards fit in this deck i really like thran golem as long as it's enchanted gets plus two plus two and has flying first strike and trample so again we could just throw any enchantment on this guy and he's going to become a five five flying first strike trample creature i think that's pretty good root water matriarch is great two blue blue merfolk two three we can tap to gain control of target creature for as long as that creature is enchanted so we can just throw any of our enchantments on one of our opponent's creatures and then gain control of it root water shaman just an auto include if you happen to be in one of the rare situations where you're in a mono blue or even just any blue aura theme because now you can cast your aura spells with flash and hakim lore weaver another great fit here another mono blue card that's dealing with auras i did an underwhelming commanders video with hakim already i threw rain in that deck these guys go in each other's decks obviously all these other mono blue aura cards i also threw in there you're going to have a lot of overlap there so you can also go check out what i did with hakim in that video because there's going to be a lot of overlap obviously because you're in mono blue dealing with auras they go in each other's decks. I was trying to figure out how can we get our opponents to target our stuff. It is definitely difficult. There's two ways to do it. Well, I mean, sort of. The first thing you can do is just throw really annoying cards that your opponents want to get off the table. You're basically forcing them to target your stuff by playing stuff that they definitely want to get off the table. Patron Wizard, I think, is a great fit. Blue, blue, blue. Human Wizard, 2-2. Two, two. 
Tap and untap wizard, you control counter target spell unless this controller pays one. So you can tap your patron wizard to do this. Your reign is also a wizard. So now you can tap your reign to try and counter your opponent's stuff. I guarantee you, your opponents are going to want to get your patron wizard off the table. It gets really annoying, obviously. That's a way you can go where I'm going to put stuff in play where I'm forcing my opponents to target my stuff just because it's really annoying stuff. You know what I mean? The other way is hive mind. I, I thought, okay, this is a way that we can sort of pseudo create a way that our opponents target our stuff. Five and a blue enchantment. If you haven't seen it before, it's a really wacky card in a commander game. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, each other player copies that spell. Each of those players may choose new targets for their copy. So when they create the copy, they control that copy. That's their copy of the spell on the stack. They're choosing new targets for it. So if we cast, say, a rapid hybridization, all of our opponents get to now copy that spell. They're getting their own copy that they control and they choose new targets for. So now they can target our stuff with it. And this to me is a win-win situation for us where, okay, now our opponents can target our stuff with their copies of rapid hybridization but if they do we get to draw a bunch of cards and if they don't want us to draw they're just going to end up targeting our other opponent's stuff so i think this is a win-win situation here and then of course when our opponents cast spells then we just again get the added advantage this just turns every removal spell into everyone's stuff's going to get hit and if our stuff gets hit we get to draw a bunch of cards so i think it actually is a great fit there i also think we're going to be drawing a bunch of cards so nadir kraken and chasm skulker this is probably the win con for this deck is now we're in a draw theme and I just go that route. I'm just making big creatures or I'm making lots of tentacle tokens. Psychosis Crawler. I can just, again, make a big creature and also hit my opponents for a lot of damage. We are going to be likely drawing cards on our opponent's turn as well. So I think you could go the I draw more than one card every turn theme as well. Like Archmage Ascension is a card that I just have desperately tried to make work in Commander for a long, long time. Two and a blue enchantment at the beginning of your end step. If you drew two or more cards this turn, you may put a quest counter on Archmage Ascension. So again, it can happen on our turn. It can happen on opponent's turn. If our opponents are targeting our stuff on their turn, we're going to get counters on this really, really fast. As long as there's six or more quest counters on it, whenever you draw a card, you instead tutor for any card, which is going to just basically put us so far ahead of our opponents, they'll never be able to catch up. And also you could throw some of the other I draw more than one card each turn effects in here like Fairy Vandal or even Min Wily Illusionist. I, I think that's a good fit there. We get those illusion tokens, the illusion tokens die, and then we get to put stuff into play. Even though we're not doing an illusion theme at all, I think it's a good fit. Ethereal Investigator is also a good fit here. When it enters the battlefield, you get to investigate X times where X is the number of opponents you have. Okay, that's pretty good in any deck. Also, whenever you draw your second card each turn, you create a white spirit token with flying so i think that also you know we can do the i draw cards and take advantage of that i mean drawing cards is always an advantage obviously but we can take more advantage of it get all of these when you draw your second card each turn effects as well because obviously when our commander or any of our other permanents are targeted it's going to be enchanted so we're going to get to draw two cards so we're going to get that second draw trigger on any turn any turn that it happens we're going to get it so i think that's a great way to take advantage of, of what's happening in this deck it's a really interesting commander and i don't know i might tackle this myself i just really love rain in general just again the art the everything i guess a little bit of nostalgia for me as well just a very interesting commander that is definitely underwhelming because again you're encouraging just like with kazul where you're encouraging your opponents to attack you here you're encouraging your opponents to target your stuff which typically isn't great but you're getting an advantage out of it so very interesting commander no question but coming in at number one this week and man was this a surprise uh uh, you know, again, this is another situation where I checked it after a couple days and Treva was nowhere to be found. And then I come back a couple days later and all of a sudden it's in first place. Big surprise. Treva the Renewer, three, a green, a white, and a blue. So a Bant Commander. It's a dragon and it's a 6-6. Six, six. Has flying. Whenever Treva the Renewer deals combat damage to a player, you may pay two and a white. If you do, choose a color. Then you gain one life for each permanent of that color. So a couple of really important things going on here. I first will point out I already made a Treva deck on my channel and I probably should have thought of that before I even included this in the poll. Nevertheless, it definitely is an underwhelming commander, no question. I had someone ask for it so I threw it in the poll and I was like, oh wait, I actually did already make a Treva deck on my channel for one of my patrons back when I did my patron deck
Tech Techs on my channel, which I don't anymore. I do them on my Patreon now. By the way, go join my Patreon if you want to check out all my Patreon Deck Techs on there. My Treva deck is one of the few. I think I only did about three or four on my actual channel before I switched over. And, you know, I really think the way I went with that is the best way to go with it. And I'm also going to do that here, but I'm going to do it differently, obviously. I'm not going to do the same thing. With any of the cycle of commanders, and there's a whole cycle of these, these three color dragon commanders that care about color, Painter's Servant is the most important card in the deck. It goes in all of those decks because when you're choosing a color, you choose whatever color you chose with your Painter's Servant, right? So if I have a Painter's Servant in play and I choose a whatever color, doesn't matter, now I choose that same color when I connect with my Treva and I gain one life for each permanent on the battlefield, lands included. What is that, like 30, 40 life, right? That's a huge swing. So that in itself is great. Just doing that, I swing with my commander, I gain 30 life. That's fantastic. I think life gain is, is super underrated in the format. 99% of the time in a casual game, your opponents are beating you by reducing your life total to zero, right? So I went that route here as well. I'm also doing a Painter Servant deck with my Dragon Lord Dramoka deck, which is also similar. You can check out that as well to maybe get some ideas. I basically combined the two. I combined the Treva deck I already did, and that deck was a hating on blue theme because my patron loves the card Seed time. So I did a let's hate on blue theme. In my Dragon Lord Jamoka deck, I did a let's hate on black theme. So basically I decided to go with black because I already did the blue and black is pretty close to the most popular color in the format. I'm not sure which one actually is. It's definitely up there. If you go into a game and there's no black decks, how often does that happen? Not a lot. But if it does... Obviously, we can just throw our Painter's Servant down and make everything black. I like the black because there's a lot of great hate cards for black and a lot of great advantage we can get out of it. But also, if we don't get our Painter's Servant, I think there's a good chance that there's going to be a lot of black decks at the table anyway. So I think we'll be okay. I got Tribute Mage in here so we can go get our Painter's Servant. I also got Enlightened Tutor so we can go get it. You can put more tutors in the deck. Obviously, in Bant Colors, there's a ton that can go get you your Painter's Servant if you need to. Also got Shifting Sky. This is the one thing that I don't have in my Dragon Lord. Dramoka version because obviously it's not blue. It's a backup for your painter servant. It's not quite as good. Two and a blue enchantment and it enters the battlefield. You choose a color and all non-land permanents are the chosen color. So it's not going to change all the lands into that color. Only the non-land permanents. Still pretty good. Still going to work really great as a backup in this deck. I also got Distorting Lands and Blind Seer. Both of these are one shots that will also work as backups. Distorting Lands only changes a permanent into that color. Blind Seer can turn a spell or permanent which can be significant because if our opponent casts a spell we don't like, we can now change that into black, right? We're going for black here. That's the color we're hating on. And then use something like, say, Life Force to pay green and a green and counter target black spell. So we can change it into a black spell and then counter it with our life force or counter it with our order of the sacred torch. We want everything to be black so that all of these cards work really, really well. But also if we just happen in a situation where there's a lot of black decks, man, maybe we don't even need to use our painter servant at all. Reap and compost again are just fantastic fits here. Uh, other cards that I have in my Dragon Lord Jamoka deck and other cards that I think you could put in any deck. I think you could put reap and compost in any deck and they'll be pretty good, especially if you're in your play group that plays a lot of black cards, right? So talk talked about these cards a lot in my color specific video where I talk about cards that mostly are dealing with black, blue, and green because those tend to be the most popular colors in the format. And so if you put them in any deck, you should be okay. Pygmy Cavu, I love. Again, I have this combo in my Dragon Lord Jamoka deck where I turn everyone's creatures into black creatures and then when it enters the battlefield, I get to draw a card for each black creature my opponent's control. So in other words, I draw a card for each creature my opponent's control. Five, six, ten cards. You can get a lot of cards off of this guy. Mystic Enforcer is another personal favorite of mine. Two green and a white. Human Nomad Mystic, 3-3. Three, three, protection from black. So again, if everything's black, this has protection from everything. And if we have Threshold, it's going to get plus three, plus three, and flying. So it is a 6-6 six, six flyer with protection from everything. That's pretty darn good. I threw Dreams of the Dead in here. This is another really fun, interesting card. I thought maybe we could even take advantage of our stuff being black as well. This is just a great card that I think can go in a lot of decks. It's weird because it's a blue enchantment that references white or black cards. So you can pay one and a blue and return target white or black creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature gains cumulative upkeep too. If the creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead. Great way to get value out of ETB creatures. I talked about this on my 10 cards videos already. All of our creatures are going to be black as well if Painter Servant is in play. So this 
just allows us to get any creature out of our graveyard for two mana. I think that's pretty good. Elephant Grass and Teferi's Moat also going to be fantastic here. Elephant Grass, black creatures can't attack you. So if all creatures are black, we just can't be attacked. Teferi's Moat, we can name a color. Of course, we'll name black, but we can choose other colors. Again, depending on what's going on in the game, if we don't have our Painter Servant, if everyone you're playing against has a green deck, maybe you can pick green here. Creatures of the Chosen Color without flying can't attack you. So again, ideally we want to have our Painter Servant choose black, and then we just can't be attacked at all, except by flying creatures. Or if whatever situation arises, maybe we might want to pick another color. Chameleon Spirit and Psychic Allergy also here. Ideally, Painter Servant we choose black, but if we don't have our painter servant or if there's a, a abundance of other colors on the table with our chameleon spirit, we can choose maybe green or white even. And it's going to have power and toughness each equal the number of permanents of the chosen color your opponents control. So again, with the painter servant, that's lands included. This guy can be like a 30-30 or a 40-40. And psychic allergy, I just really love. It's such a weird card. It has some of the weirdest art I think I've ever seen. Three blue blue enchantment as it enters the battlefield. Again, you get to choose a color. Ideally, we're going to choose black and at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep it deals x damage to them where x is the number of non-token permanents of that chosen color they control so again if they have five six lands in play a bunch of other stuff they can be taking like 10 12 damage at the beginning of our upkeep we destroy it unless we sacrifice two islands but even if we just get one sweep with this where each of our opponents take 12 or 15 damage and then we let it go to the graveyard maybe if we want to keep it around to close out the game we can sacrifice the two islands don't forget we are in a life gain theme as well and and I like to go with the I'm gaining a large chunk of life theme, right? You know, when you're in a life gain deck, there are cards that work really good with I'm gaining one instance of life at a time. And there are cards that work great with I'm gaining huge chunks of life like Accomplished Alchemist. Taps to add one mana of any color, but also can tap to add X mana of any one color. Where X is the amount of life you gain this turn. So again, if we gain 30 or 40 life with Treva, now our Accomplished Alchemist will tap for 30 mana or whatever. I mean, that's just insane. Lathiel, same thing. At the beginning of each end step, if you gain life this turn, distribute up to that many plus one, plus one counters among any number of other target creatures. So we can put 30 counters on our Treva. We can put some on our Lathiel. You get to distribute them however you like. Nykthos, Paragon, same thing. Four white, white, enchantment creature, human soldier, four, six. Whenever you gain life, you may put that many plus one, plus one counters on each creature you control. Do this only once each turn. We only want to do it once each turn, right? We want that big hit with our Treva, gain 30 life, put 30 plus one plus one counters on each creature we control. Our opponents would have to deal with that situation immediately or the game is over. And I also threw Angel of Destiny in here as a win con. Three white, white, Angel Cleric, two, six, flying and double strike. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you and that player each gain that much life at the beginning of your end step. If you have at least 15 or more life than your starting life total, which we will. Each player, Angel of Destiny, attack this turn, loses the game. So this just becomes, you know, again, just a win con for us in this deck. I think it's a good fit. We don't care if our opponents are gaining life at this point because they're just going to lose the game, right? I think this is a really fun, interesting deck. The one drawback of these and what makes all of this cycle, again, really underwhelming for me is it's a six mana creature that I got to get into play then I got to swing, then I got to connect, then I got to play the three before I get that trigger. So it can be a little slow, a little tedious. Nevertheless, this is what you guys wanted. This is what you asked for. This is what you're getting. And I think I made a really fun, interesting deck here. And of course, the deck list for it is in the description below. Give it a click. If you want to see how this deck plays out, happy holidays, everybody. I am going to take a couple days off and uh, kick up my feet and drink some hot chocolate. Hope you guys enjoy yourselves and into the new year. And I will see you in 2022. But that is it for today. And thanks for tuning in. Thank you.